All right, let's talk about William the First in Rise of Kingdoms and whether or not he is a commander that you should be looking into in 2024 or if he should be put on the back burner for any investing. If you guys are new here, this is Gaines Gaming. We make Rise of Kingdoms content. So if you do enjoy this video, do me a favor, drop a like and subscribe for more. But with William the First, obviously he is a cavalry commander that is a great pair with a lot of different primary commanders in Rise of Kingdoms. Currently, I am using William and I am using him with Hookah Bing. This pairing has been absolutely phenomenal in the open field, and I'm extremely, extremely happy with how my William investment has performed over the last two KVKs. Really, one and a half KVKs, I would say, because the previous one, I didn't really have any fighting, but he had about 5 million kills my last KVK, which was absolutely insane. And like I said, I was pairing him with a Hookah Bing primary. Now, a lot of people like William with Nevsky. And the reason why is because people like the Nevsky William in order to be able to use Hookah Bing and Joan Prime. Now, those, in my opinion, are the two best cavalry pairings in the game, or what I've been using right now, which is Nevsky Joan and Hookah Bing William. In my opinion, if you're going to be running two cavalry marches, those are probably the two that you should be looking into the most because they will give you the most open field benefits. Now, with William, first, let's go over his skill kits and talk about what exactly he brings to the table before we make that decision of whether or not he should or should not be commander that you should invest into. Now, first of all, his first skill is AOE, which is awesome for the open field. He deals direct damage up to three enemy troops in a rectangle, which is really the biggest downside with him. Damage factor of 1500 plus the reduction of 15% per enemy. And for the next three seconds, troops hit by the skill cannot benefit from buffs that increase skill damage, which is extremely powerful, especially if you're hitting like a commander like Huga Bing, like Nevsky, like Joan Prime, really those just really high damage, uh, skill damage commanders, you, you really benefit, um, plus losing 30% march speed. Now, the downside with this is that it does not pair with Huga Bing's active skill, which decreases the march speed by 50%. So that's another downside of that pairing, um, which is another reason why people like the Nevsky William instead of the Huka Bing William, because that way you get both the benefits from the march speed reduction. Um, that is one thing that I do forego when I am using this pairing. But looking at his second skill, this commander's cav units gain 20% attack and 15% march speed. And while outside Alliance territory, their troop deals 10% more damage, which is awesome, especially if you are fighting in the open field, because a lot of times you're fighting on nobody's territory or enemy territory if you are pushing. Now, if you are playing more defense, you don't get this benefit, but you know, obviously still a very solid skill with the extra march speed and attack regardless. Now his third skill, if this commander's troop is on the map, cav units will gain 20% attack. And whenever their troop launches a basic attack, has a 10% chance to deal extra direct damage to the target. If the target is surrounded, it will take even more direct damage. Damage factor of surrounding troops times 80 up to five troops cooldown is five seconds. So this is basically a double instant proc skill, which is pretty awesome. So essentially with this skill, you are for sure going to be doing 800 damage factor, the 10% chance to do 800 damage factor. So essentially once every 10 seconds. And then if that target is surrounded, it will do an additional damage of 80 damage factor up to five troops. So up to an extra 400 damage factor. So that's 1200 damage factor that you could be doing in addition to your active skill of the 1500 damage factor to three enemy units. Downside of this is that it's only to the one unit, so only the one that you are targeting, which is still pretty solid. So that's why you want to have this third skill at five out of five, because you will get that extra bonus. Now with William, a lot of people do recommend stopping him at 5551. And as you can see, that's person what I have done as well. But his fourth skill, if the hidden bloodline skill hits exactly one target, that is his primary skill, his active skill, this commander's troop gains 10% defense for three seconds up to 20% defense for three seconds. So if you're not hitting multiple troops, you will gain an extra 20% defense. And then if the skill hits two or more targets, so if you do actually get the benefit from the AOE, up to five nearby allied or friendly troops, including this commander's own troop, will gain an extra 50 rage per second and 10% defense for three seconds. And again, that's up to 20% defense. Now, this is really nice because regardless, you are gonna be getting this skill. And, you know, investing the extra 300 sculptures to elevate William from 5551 to expertise, 
I don't think warrants this skill. I don't think this skill is good enough to warrant that amount of an upgrade, but let's take a look at his expertise first. So his expertise will increase one of his prior skills. So you can see Judgment Day will enhance the Norman Conquest, which is going to be his third skill. So with the expertise, instead of the 800 damage factor plus the additional up to 400 damage factor, you'll be getting 1000 damage factor and up to 500 damage factor. So instead of 1200, you're getting up to 1500 damage factor, which again, I mean, it is a pretty decent skill, but again, I don't think this warrants the expertise of 300 additional sculptures to then expertise William. So that's the reason why people say to stop William at 5551, because that's really all you really need him to be in order to field him and do amazing in the open field. And like I said, I've been running this for a while now, and I'm extremely happy with how William has performed. And, you know, even though he is a really old commander, obviously, I unlocked him late 2021, but he came out well before that, I believe. I don't know exactly when he came out. Um, you can see I did have 252 William sculptures and then 128 universals that I put into him. And so I did put an investment into William after, you know, spinning the wheel and everything like that. But with William the first, I think that he is the fourth commander for cavalry that you should look at investing into. That is behind Joan Prime, B number one. That is behind Hookah Bing being number two and behind Nevsky being number three. So William is really the fourth option that you can look into. And really the commander that William is going to be replacing is actually Metmed. Metmed is the commander that William will be replacing for you. And the reason why, if I can even find Metmed, there he is. The reason why is because when you are going into Season of Conquest, Obviously, you are still going to be using KVK2 commanders right away, unless you're an old account that migrated back to KVK2. But for most players, you are still going to be using commanders like Metmed, like Alexander the Great, like Charles Martel. You know, these commanders that you pretty much need to use until you get Season of Conquest commanders. And so what a lot of people do when they are focusing on cavalry in the open field is the first three commanders that they're going to look into are Joan Prime, Hukabing, and Nevsky for cavalry, I should say. And with those three commanders, you have two different pairings. You can do Nevsky with Joan, or you can do Hookah Bing with Joan. Now that leaves one of your three commanders being empty, doesn't have a secondary. So the option that I would recommend for that case, if you're running two cav marches and you're, you know, you have three of the four, but you don't have William yet, is in the meantime, you can use Metmed. And you can run Hukabing and Joan Prime, and you can run Nevsky and Metmed. I have run that. I ran that before I had Joan Prime, and it still did phenomenal. You know, the extra damage factor, you have the extra skill damage bonus, which is really nice. Plus, if you have the museum buff with Metmed, it is even better. People forget about this. The extra 30% troop health and 10% skill damage is remarkable. So, you know, using that in the open field is a must have when you are transitioning from kvk2 to season of conquest so using metmed in the meantime before you can invest into william is a great idea and honestly for 2024 i would put caution into people that are looking into william and the reason why is because i do think that william is an upgrade from metmed i think it's a really great upgrade but i don't think that it is a commander that you should look into right now especially when we are looking at getting cavalry in the next probably three to six months. Might be sooner than that, might be later. Not really sure what their timetable is looking like right now for the next calves, but the next calves will most likely be replacing William. And I think it's going to be pretty much like an XY 2.0, in my opinion, is what I think the next calf commander is going to be. And in my opinion, I think the next calf commander is going to be a great matchup with Nevsky because I think they want us to be using Hukabing with John Prime and then pair Nevsky with the next Cav Commander. And, you know, like I said, that's what people are typically doing right now is running Nevsky with William or Nevsky with Metmed and then running Hukabing and Joan. And so the next Cavalry will most likely be the replacement for the Nevsky and then new Commander and replacing the William, replacing the XY, replacing uh, the Metmed. And so... In that regard, I would say probably halt on William investments unless you are like going into a fight tomorrow and you're like, I have, 
I have 1500 gold heads to use up and I want to use William, go for it. Get him to 5551. It's a very low cost of entry as well. You know, you don't need him expertise. It's a very low cost for basically a commander that you are finished with. You don't need to put more into him. It's very low cost. So in that regard, William is awesome. It's super cheap to fuel the William and you can pair him with many different commanders. You can pair him with Saladin, you can pair him, you know, with Nevsky, with Hukabing, many different options for William. And so in that regard, awesome. If you can use him, use him. But if you're looking at investing into William, I would say make sure you have the meta commanders finished first. You know, make sure you have Nevsky, Hukabing, Joan Prime, you have Luce, you have Scipio. If you're running archers, you have, you know, Herman Prime, you have Zhu Liang. I would not recommend Boudicca right now, but make sure you have those meta commanders finished up before you're looking into a commander like William, because he really is, I don't want to say a specialty role, but he is more niche where, you know, he's not a commander that you're like, you need to have William on the field. Like it's awesome to have him on the field. It's super, super beneficial too, but it's not a make or break where you like need to have Joan Prime or you need to have Luce or Scipio. He's not that kind of commander, but he is still phenomenal. So I hope this answers some questions. If you guys have any thoughts, leave them down below. Excited to see what you guys think about William, but thanks for checking out the video and have a great rest of your day.